What's up everyone? This is Benjamin and Brian Tercero. We are local brothers and realtors here in the beautiful Santa Fe, New Mexico. Now, if this is your first time on this channel, we're here to get you educated on what it's like to be a Santa Fe local and more importantly, to help you become a local by serving you throughout your entire home buying experience. So make sure that you tap that subscribe button so that you're notified every time we release a new video. So if you're planning on making a move to Santa Fe or anywhere in New Mexico for that matter, make sure you give us a call, shoot us a text or an email, or even just leave us a comment down below. However you want to get a hold of us, we're here to serve you in your move to the Santa Fe area. Now in this video, we want to discuss something that comes up a lot when we talk to our out-of-state buyers. Is there anything to do in Santa Fe? Or will you just be bored out of your mind? Well, yes, there are a lot of things to do in Santa Fe. You could stare at the wall, play ping pong by yourself, or just watch prairie dogs popping in and out of their holes. So yeah, tons to do for fun, just kidding. There really is stuff that you can do, and today we're gonna to give you 20 things in no particular order so that you don't have to play ping pong by yourself. Unless, of course, if you're training for a serious ping pong tournament, in that case, then you need to turn your dang screen off and go solo ping pong your heart out. For the rest of you, let's get to it. First and foremost, let's start with the plaza. The plaza in Santa Fe, New Mexico is a historic landmark that draws visitors from all over the world to experience its unique blend of Native American, Spanish, and American cultures. Located in the heart of downtown Santa Fe, the plaza is surrounded by adobe buildings that houses shops, restaurants, and museums, as well as the iconic Palace of the Governors. Originally established in the early 1600s, the plaza has served as a gathering place for Native American tribes, Spanish colonizers, and American settlers throughout its long and somewhat complicated history. Today, it remains a hub of activity and a symbol of the city's vibrant cultural heritage. One of the most notable features of the plaza is the Palace of the Governors, which was built in 1610 and is the oldest continuously occupied public building in the United States. The palace was originally the seat of the Spanish government in the region, and today it serves as a museum that showcases the history of Santa Fe and the Southwest. In addition to the palace, there are a number of other historic buildings and landmarks that surround the plaza, including the St. Francis Cathedral Basilica and the Loreto Chapel. Visitors can take guided tours of these sites to learn more about the history and the significance. Of course, the plaza is also a popular destination for shopping and dining. The area is home to a wide range of shops and boutiques that sell everything from Native American jewelry and pottery to high-end fashion and art. There are also lots of restaurants and cafes that serve up delicious New Mexican cuisine, including our local favorites like green chili stew, enchiladas, and of course, margaritas. Throughout the year, the plaza hosts a variety of festivals and events that celebrate the city's cultural heritage. These include Indian Market, the Spanish Market, the Fiestas de Santa Fe, live music nights in the summer, and lots of other events. The plaza in Santa Fe is a must-see destination for anyone living in Santa Fe or just visiting the city. Its rich history, beautiful architecture, and vibrant culture make it a unique and unforgettable place that truly embodies the spirit of the Southwest. All right, number two is the museums. Santa Fe, New Mexico is a city steeped in history and culture, and there's no better way to experience its rich heritage than by visiting our many, many museums. From Native American art and artifacts to Spanish colonial history and contemporary art, Santa Fe's museums have something for everyone. And one of the most popular museums in Santa Fe is the Museum of International Folk Art. This museum houses one of the largest collections of folk art in the world with over 130,000 objects from more than 100 countries. Visitors can explore exhibits that showcase everything from textiles and pottery to costumes and toys and learn about the cultural traditions that inspired them. Now, for those interested in Native American art and history, the Museum of Indian Arts and Culture is another must-see destination. The museum's exhibits include everything from prehistoric artifacts to contemporary works of art and it offers insights into the diverse cultures and traditions of New Mexico's Native American tribes. Another popular museum in Santa Fe is the New Mexico History Museum, which chronicles the state's history from prehistoric times to the present day. Exhibits cover everything from Spanish colonialism in the Santa Fe Trail to the state's role in the atomic age and beyond. Art enthusiasts will also find plenty to appreciate in Santa Fe's museums. The George O'Keefe Museum, for example, showcases the life and the work of this iconic American artist with a collection that includes over 3,000 of her paintings, drawings, and sculptures. The Museum of Contemporary Native Arts, on the other hand, is dedicated to showcasing the work of Native American artists from across the United States with exhibits that explore contemporary issues and themes. In addition to these museums, Santa Fe is also home to a number of smaller, specialized museums that offer unique perspectives on the city's history and its culture. 
These include the Wheelwright Museum of the American Indian, which focuses on the art and culture of the Southwest indigenous peoples, and the Santa Fe's Children's Museum, which offers hands-on exhibits and programs for kids of all ages. The Museums of Santa Fe offer residents and visitors a unique and immersive way to experience the city's rich history and culture. So be sure to check them out. All right, number three is Meow Wolf. If you get bored with the standard museums that Benjamin was just talking about and you're looking for a truly unique and unforgettable experience, then Meow Wolf in Santa Fe, New Mexico is a must visit destination. This immersive and interactive art exhibit offers a one of a kind experience that combines art, technology, and storytelling in a way that is unlike anything else. At Meow Wolf's House of Eternal Return, visitors are transported to a parallel universe filled with interactive installations, hidden rooms, and mind bending spaces. The exhibit is designed to be sort of a labyrinth, multi-dimensional experience that engages all of the senses and challenges visitors to think outside the box. One of the most unique features of Meow Wolf is its use of technology to create a truly immersive experience. Visitors are invited to interact with the environment in a variety of ways, triggering lights and sounds and other special effects as they move through the exhibit. This technology creates a sense of wonder that is unlike anything else you will ever experience in an art museum or a gallery. You can even play music by touching laser beams. How cool is that? Now, the House of Eternal Return was created by a collective of artists, musicians, and writers known as Meow Wolf in partnership with the one and only George R. R. Martin. The exhibit features a storyline that is woven throughout the space, inviting visitors to become part of the narrative as they engage with the environment in a way that is both playful and thought-provoking. Meow Wolf has become a must-visit destination for art lovers, families, and anyone looking for an unforgettable experience. The exhibit has garnered rave reviews from visitors and critics alike, and has even inspired a feature-length documentary about their collective and their work. In addition to the House of Eternal Return, Meow Wolf also has expanded to other cities including Las Vegas and Denver, and has plans for further expansion in the coming years. With its innovative approach to art and storytelling, Meow Wolf is truly one-of-a-kind attraction that is not to be missed. So if you find yourself living in Santa Fe or just visiting, be sure to make a visit to Meow Wolf and experience the magic for yourself. Number four, Canyon Road. Canyon Road is a historic and picturesque street that is home to over 100 art galleries, boutiques, and some of the best restaurants Santa Fe has to offer. For art lovers and cultural enthusiasts, Canyon Road is a must visit destination. Canyon Road dates back to the 1600s when it was used as an important trade route by Native American tribes and Spanish settlers. Today, it's known for its adobe architecture, charming courtyards, and vibrant art scene. The street is lined with galleries that showcase everything from traditional Native American art and jewelry to contemporary paintings and sculptures. Now, one of the highlights of Canyon Road is the annual Canyon Road Faralito Walk, which takes place every December for the Christmas season. Now, during this event, the street is lined with faralitos, which are small paper lanterns with candles inside of them, creating a glowing atmosphere. Like I mentioned a moment ago, Canyon Road is also home to a number of restaurants and cafes that offer delicious food and charming indoor and outdoor dining options. From authentic New Mexican dishes like enchiladas and green chili stew to international cuisine like French and Italian, there's something for everyone on Canyon Road. Now, for those interested in history and culture, Canyon Road also offers a glimpse into Santa Fe's rich heritage. Many of the buildings on the street date back to the 1800s and feature traditional adobe architecture and elements of Spanish colonialism. Visitors can explore the area's historic buildings and learn more about the city's fascinating history. Canyon Road is another must-visit destination for anyone living in Santa Fe. Its vibrant art scene, charming architecture, and rich cultural history make it an unforgettable experience that truly embodies the spirit of the Southwest. Now, whether you're an art lover, a history buff, or simply looking for a charming and picturesque street to explore, Canyon Road is well worth the visit. All right, number five, the Santa Fe Opera. For anyone looking for an experience that combines music, theater, and stunning outdoor scenery, the Santa Fe Opera is a must-visit destination. This renowned opera company has been entertaining audiences for over 60 years with its world-class productions, breathtaking outdoor theater, and stunning views of the New Mexico landscape. Not to mention the have-to-see-it-to-believe-it tailgate parties that happen in the parking lot before every single event. Now we're talking about charcuterie boards and wine all spread out on linen-covered foldable tables. It is both odd and delicious. Now that said, keep in mind that we are at a higher elevation than most of you watching, so take it easy on the wine, seriously though. The opera staff is trained to be prepared for people passing out due to drinking too much wine at high altitudes. Now don't be that person, unless you just wanna have a great story to share with your friends, then by all means be that person, but maybe wear a helmet at least. Now the Santa Fe Opera is located on a 199 acre campus just outside of Santa Fe and features state-of-the-art opera house that seats over 2,000 people. 
The theater is designed to take advantage of the stunning natural surroundings with panoramic views of the Sangre de Cristo Mountains and the New Mexico sunsets provide a beautiful backdrop to the performances. The opera company is known for its world-class productions, which features some of the most talented singers, conductors, and directors from all around the world. Shout out to our beautiful clients, Chelsea and Josh. Now each season, the company puts on a variety of operas ranging from classic works by Mozart and contemporary pieces by modern composers. In addition to its stunning productions, the Santa Fe Opera also offers a variety of events and programs that showcase the art of opera and provide opportunities for audiences to engage with the performers and creative teams. These events include open rehearsals, backstage tours, and pre-performance talks that offer insights into the productions and the creative process. Benji even saw the National in concert there a few years ago. Beyond the opera itself, the Santa Fe Opera also offers a variety of dining options, including a pre-performance buffet and an elegant fine dining experience at the cantina. Visitors can also explore the beautiful gardens and grounds, which feature sculptures, fountains, and stunning views of the surrounding landscape. Overall, the Santa Fe Opera is another must-visit destination. Its stunning outdoor theater, world-class productions, and beautiful natural surroundings make it a true gem of the Southwest. So whether you're an opera aficionado or simply looking for a memorable evening of music and theater, be sure to add the Santa Fe Opera to your list of to-dos. Okay, number six is a twofer, the Cathedral and the Loreto Chapel. The city of Santa Fe, New Mexico is home to two stunning architectural wonders, the Cathedral Basilica of St. Francis of Assisi, say that five times fast, and the Loreto Chapel. Both of these religious structures are must-visit destinations for anyone who appreciates history, art, culture, or just plain beauty. The Cathedral Basilica of St. Francis of Assisi, which I'm just going to call the cathedral from now on, is a stunning architectural masterpiece located in the heart of Santa Fe. But this magnificent building is more than just a pretty facade. It has a rich and fascinating history that spans over centuries. The original church was built in the early 1600s by Spanish colonists who had established a settlement in Santa Fe. The first church was a simple adobe structure, but it was an important hub for religious and cultural life in the community. Over the years, the church underwent several renovations and expansions, with the most significant changes taking place in the mid-1800s. At this time, Archbishop Jean-Baptiste Lamy was determined to create a grand and impressive church for the growing Catholic community of Santa Fe. Archbishop Lamy hired French architect Antoine Molly to design the new church, which would be built in the Gothic Revival style. The result was a stunning edifice with soaring towers, intricate stained glass windows, and ornate carvings and sculptures. The cathedral was officially dedicated in 1887 and it quickly became a beloved landmark in Santa Fe. But the church's history didn't end there. It has continued to evolve and adapt to the changing times and needs. In the 1960s, the church underwent a major restoration project that repaired and updated many of the building's features. And in 2005, the church was elevated to the status of a basilica by Pope Benedict XVI in recognition of its importance and significance. Today, the cathedral remains a vital and active part of the Santa Fe community. It is a popular destination for visitors who come to admire its beauty and learn about its rich history. But above all, it's a testament to the enduring power of the community's faith. Secondly, and just down the street, the Loreto Chapel is a small but magnificent chapel with a rich and fascinating history as well. This beautiful building has captured the hearts and imaginations of visitors for over a century, and its story is one of mystery, faith, and human ingenuity. The chapel was built in the late 1800s, and it quickly became a beloved part of the Santa Fe community. But there was one problem. The chapel's architects had forgotten to include a staircase to the choir loft. I'm not sure how you forget a staircase to a choir loft, but who knows what those peeps were up to back then. Of course, the lack of a staircase was a major issue because it meant that the nuns who lived in the chapel's convent were unable to access the loft. The chapel's small size and limited space made it impossible to install a traditional staircase, and so the nuns were left with a seemingly insurmountable problem. But then something miraculous happened. According to legend, a mysterious stranger appeared at the chapel and offered to build the staircase for the nuns, because that's just what strangers did back then, I guess. The stranger worked in secret, using only simple tools and materials, and when he was finished, he disappeared without a trace. The staircase that the stranger built was a marvel of engineering and design. It was a spiral staircase with no visible means of support. It appeared to be suspended in mid-air, a floating staircase as it were. The stairs were made of wood, and they curved gracefully upward towards the choir loft. The staircase was an instant sensation, and it quickly became a symbol of faith and mystery. Over the years, many theories have been put forth about the identity of the mysterious stranger who built this staircase. Some believe that he was merely a carpenter, while others think that he was an angel sent by God to help the nuns get into that lonely loft. 
Today, the Loreto Chapel remains a beloved landmark in Santa Fe. Visitors come from all around the world to see the miraculous staircase and to marvel at the beauty and history of this unique and special chapel. Both the cathedral and the Loreto Chapel are important religious and cultural landmarks in Santa Fe. Their beauty and history are a testament to the city's rich cultural heritage and make them a must-see destination for anyone living or visiting Santa Fe. All right, number seven is 215 East of Argus Street, or the oldest house. The oldest house in Santa Fe, New Mexico is a charming and historic building with a fascinating story. This adobe structure, which dates back to the early 1600s, is one of the city's most beloved landmarks and it is a testament to the enduring spirit of the people who built and lived in it. Now this house is likely to have been originally built by the Pueblo natives before the Spanish colonists settled in Santa Fe. At the time, the area was still mostly wilderness and the people had to rely on their own ingenuity and resourcefulness to survive. The house was built using traditional adobe construction techniques which involved using mud, straw, and water to make bricks that were then baked in the sun. The adobe bricks were then used to build the walls of the house which were several feet thick in some places and provided excellent insulation from all the elements. Now over the years, the house underwent several renovations and updates as different families and owners made their mark on the building. But despite these changes, the house remained an important part of Santa Fe's history and identity. In the mid 1900s, the house was purchased by a group of preservationists who were determined to restore and protect the building for future generations. They worked tirelessly to repair and update the house while still preserving its original character and charm. Today, the oldest house in Santa Fe is a popular destination for visitors who come to admire its beauty and learn about its history. The house is filled with fascinating artifacts and exhibits that tell the story of Santa Fe's early days, and it's a testament to the resilience and perseverance of the people who built and lived in this remarkable place. Now, whether you're a history buff, an architect enthusiast, or just someone who appreciates the beauty of the past, the oldest house in Santa Fe is a must-see destination that is sure to leave a lasting impression. All right, number eight, the Rail Yard District. The Rail Yard District in Santa Fe is a vibrant and dynamic neighborhood that is another must-visit place for anyone in Santa Fe. This historic district located just a few blocks from the city's historic plaza is home to an eclectic mix of art galleries, restaurants, shops, and museums. The rail yard district was once the hub of the city's railroad transportation system, but today it has been transformed into a cultural and entertainment center. The district's historic buildings have been restored and repurposed, creating a unique blend of old and new. And one of the most popular attractions in the rail yard district is the Santa Fe Farmer's Market. The market, which is open year-round, features a wide variety of fresh produce, baked goods, and artisanal products from local farmers and vendors. The market's a great place to sample traditional Southwest cuisine and to shop for unique gifts and souvenirs, but we'll talk about it a little bit more in a moment. The Royal Yard District is also home to a number of art galleries showcasing the work of local and national artists. Visitors can browse through a wide selection of paintings, sculptures, and other types of art and meet the artists themselves sometimes. One popular attraction in the Rail Yard District is the site Santa Fe Contemporary Art Museum. The museum features cutting edge exhibitions from some of the world's most innovative artists. The museum also hosts a variety of events and programs, including concerts, lectures, and film screenings. Another place in the Rail Yard where us Santa Feans spend a lot of our time is Violet Crown, which is a movie theater slash tap room slash restaurant slash excellent place to get some work done. I may have written most of this video while sipping one or two or three of many of their delicious beers that they have on tap. Violet Crown is not just your average movie theater. It's a haven for film lovers, art enthusiasts, and anyone looking for a little bit of luxury. From the moment you enter, you'll be struck by the elegant and modern decor, the plush seating, and the tantalizing smell of fresh popcorn. But let's talk about the primary reason you should visit Violet Crown, the movies, of course. This theater offers a unique selection of independent films, foreign cinema, and mainstream blockbusters. You won't find many of these films playing at your local megaplex. And the best part, you can enjoy your favorite flick with a delicious craft beer or a glass of wine in hand. In addition to its cultural attractions, the Rail Yard District is also a great place to shop and dine. The district is home to a variety of boutique shops selling everything from handmade jewelry to Southwest inspired clothing. The district is also home to a number of restaurants, cafes, and bars serving up everything from traditional New Mexico cuisine to international fare. In conclusion, the Rail Yard District in Santa Fe is a vibrant and exciting neighborhood that is a must visit destination for anyone visiting or living here. Its mix of cultural attractions, dining options, and shopping opportunities make it a great place to spend a day or evening exploring. And here we are, Numero Nueve, El Rancho de los Golondrinas, located just south of Santa Fe. This is a living museum that offers visitors a glimpse into the history and the culture of the Southwest. 
This unique museum, which covers over 200 acres, is home to historic buildings, gardens, and animals, all of which are representative of life in the region from the 18th to the 20th century. The museum's main attraction is its collection of over 30 historic buildings, including homes, shops, schools, and churches. These buildings have been carefully restored and furnished with period-appropriate furnishings, offering visitors a unique glimpse into the life of the Southwest during the Spanish colonial and the territorial periods. In addition to its historic buildings, El Rancho de los Colondrinas is also home to traditional gardens, orchards, and fields. Now, these gardens, which are maintained, use traditional methods featuring a variety of plants, including medicinal herbs, vegetables, and fruit trees. Visitors could explore the gardens and learn about the traditional agricultural practices that were used in the region for centuries. The museum also features a variety of animals, including sheep, goats, and chickens, which are representatives of the animals that were raised in the region during the 18th and 19th centuries. Visitors can watch sheep shearing and wool processing demonstrations, as well as participate in traditional crafts, such as spinning and weaving. Plus, you can sometimes even make and then eat your own tortillas, which is super cool. And Rancho de los Colondrinas also hosts a variety of events and festivals throughout the year, including the Santa Fe Wine Festival and the Harvest Festivals. These events offer visitors the opportunity to sample local foods and wines, watch traditional dances and music performances, and participate in hands-on activities. El Rancho de los Colondrinas is a unique and fascinating destination that offers visitors a glimpse into the history and culture of the Southwest. Its historic buildings, gardens, and animals, along with its events and festivals, make it another must-visit destination for anyone interested in the history and the traditions of the region. So make sure you go check that out. All right, number 10, and possibly the most important of all, the Margarita Trail. The Margarita Trail is a unique and super fun way to explore the city's vibrant culinary scene. This trail, which features over 45 bars and restaurants, offers visitors the opportunity to sample some of the best margaritas in Southwest, while also learning about the history and culture of the city. That is, of course, as long as you don't try to hit every spot on the map in one night, because in that case, you won't remember a single thing that you learned. The Margarita Trail is easy to follow, with a map available at the city's tourism office or just get it online. The trail features a variety of bars and restaurants ranging from southwest cantinas to upscale cocktail lounges. Each establishment on the trail offers a unique take on the classic margarita, using different ingredients and techniques to create their own signature drinks. One of the highlights of the Margarita Trail is the opportunity to learn about the history and the culture of the city. Many of the bars and restaurants on the trail are located in historic buildings and offer visitors the chance to learn about the city's rich cultural heritage. As some bars and restaurants also offer margarita making classes and other educational programs allowing visitors to learn about the art of crafting the perfect margarita. In addition to sampling margaritas, the Margarita Trail is also a great way to explore the city's culinary scene. Many of the bars and restaurants on the trail offer traditional Southwest cuisine along with other international flavors. Visitors can sample everything from classic tacos and enchiladas to more innovative dishes such as green chili cheeseburgers or fusion cuisine. The Margarita Trail also offers visitors the opportunity to explore Santa Fe's nightlife. Many of the bars and restaurants on the trail feature live music and other entertainment from time to time, making it a great way to spend an evening out on the town. Now, perhaps you'll arrive at a bar where Nosotros is playing and you'll be swept up in dance, like I get sometimes. In conclusion, the Margarita Trail is a must-do when in Santa Fe. Number 11, and probably my personal favorite, Ski Santa Fe. Ski Santa Fe is a premier winter destination located just 16 miles northeast of Santa Fe in the Sangre de Cristo Mountains. The ski area, which covers over 1,400 acres, offers visitors a variety of terrain, including beginner, intermediate, and expert runs, making it a great destination for skiers and snowboarders of all ski levels. Ski Santa Fe is known for its stunning views of the surrounding mountains and its high altitude skiing. The ski area's base elevation is 10,350 feet with the summit reaching over 12,000 feet. This high altitude ensures that the snow quality is excellent throughout the winter season. The ski area features 83 trails plus or minus depending on conditions ranging from gentle beginner runs to challenging expert terrain. The ski area's terrain park is also a popular destination for snowboarders featuring a variety of jumps, rails and other features. Ski Santa Fe also offers a variety of services and amenities to make visitors' experiences as enjoyable as possible. The ski area features a full-service rental shop, offering a wide variety of ski and snowboard equipment for rent. The ski area also offers ski and snowboard lessons for all ages and skill levels, with a team of experienced instructors, and I used to be one of those guys. In addition to skiing and snowboarding, Ski Santa Fe also offers a variety of other winter activities, including snowshoeing, cross-country skiing, snowmobile tours, and sledding slopes. The ski area's Nordic Center features over 10 kilometers of groomed trails, making it a great destination for cross-country skiers and snowshoers. Ski Santa Fe also offers a variety of dining options, including a cafeteria-style restaurant, a full-service restaurant, and a coffee shop. 
The base also features a ski shop, a ticket office, and ski patrol station. Ski Santa Fe is a premier winter destination that offers visitors a variety of terrain, stunning views, and exceptional snow quality. Whether you're a seasoned skier or snowboarder or a beginner looking to learn, Ski Santa Fe is the perfect destination for a winter adventure. Just ask all your friends from Texas. They know all about it. All right, number 12, the Santa Fe Farmer's Market, which we talked about briefly a moment ago. The Farmer's Market is a vibrant and delicious destination for anyone interested in local food and agriculture. The market, which is open year round, features a wide variety of fresh produce, baked goods, artisanal products, and more, all grown or produced by local farmers and vendors. The Santa Fe Farmer's Market is one of the oldest and largest farmer's markets in the Southwest with a history dating back to the early 20th century. It's also been voted as one of the best in the nation. Today, the market is a bustling hub of activity with hundreds of vendors and thousands of visitors every week. One of the highlights of the market is its selection of fresh produce, including fruits, vegetables, herbs, and spices. The market's produce is grown using traditional and sustainable farming practices, ensuring that visitors can enjoy fresh, healthy, and flavorful food. The market also features a wide variety of artisanal products, including breads, cheeses, jams, and honey, all made using locally sourced ingredients. Try the red chili jam, it's too good. In addition to its food offerings, the Santa Fe Farmer's Market also features a variety of crafts and other products. Visitors can browse through a wide selection of handmade jewelry, pottery, clothing, and other crafts, also all made by local artisans. The market also hosts a variety of events and activities throughout the year, including cooking demonstrations, live music performances, and educational programs. These events offer visitors the opportunity to learn about local food and agriculture, as well as to connect with other members of the community. The Santa Fe Farmer's Market is also a great place to support local farmers and vendors. By purchasing products from the market, visitors are helping to support the local economy and the environment while also enjoying delicious and healthy food. All right, number 13, the Fiestas de Santa Fe. The Fiestas de Santa Fe is an annual celebration of the Mexican and Spanish heritage of the city and it is one of the largest and oldest festivals in the United States. The Fiesta de Santa Fe is an annual celebration in Santa Fe, New Mexico that dates back over 300 years. This vibrant and colorful event has become an important part of the city's culture and identity, and it's a testament to the rich history and the traditions of the people who call Santa Fe home. The fiestas were first held in 1712 in honor of the reconquest of Santa Fe by Spanish colonists. At the time, the city was under the control of the Native American tribes who had driven out the Spanish colonists several years earlier. The Spanish colonists, led by Governor Don Diego de Vargas, returned to Santa Fe in 1692 and successfully reestablished their control over the city. The fiestas were held to celebrate this victory and to thank God for the colonists' safe return. Now, over the years, the fiestas grew in size and scope and they became an important part of Santa Fe's cultural landscape. The celebration typically takes place in September and it includes a wide range of events such as parades, concerts and dances, and religious ceremonies. Now, one of the most iconic events of the fiestas has ended up being the burning of Zazobra, which we will talk about in just a moment. With a growing awareness of the complicated history and impact of colonization, the fiestas have undergone many changes and adaptations over the years in an attempt to make room for all of the voices in the story. This is a sensitive work in progress that we are just beginning to wrestle with as a community, but still, the fiestas remain an important part of Santa Fe's identity and culture. They are a testament to the resilience of the spirit of the people who call Santa Fe home, and they continue to bring joy, celebration, and the unity to the city and its residents. Now, whether you're a longtime resident or a new resident of Santa Fe, or a first time visitor, the fiestas are a must see event that will leave you with a deeper appreciation and understanding of the special city and its unique history and traditions. So, que viva Santa Fe. All right, numero 14, Zazobra. Are you looking for a good time? Do you want to party like it's 1924? Then you need to check out Zazobra in Santa Fe. Zazobra, also known as Old Man Gloom, is a giant marionette that has become an iconic symbol of Santa Fe. This strange and mysterious figure is burned every year to kick off the Fiestas de Santa Fe in a spectacular and cathartic event that has become one of the city's most beloved traditions. The origin of Zazobra is shrouded in mystery, but it's believed to have been created in the early 20th century by artist Will Schuster in his backyard. Schuster was inspired by the folk traditions of Mexico and he wanted to create a figure that would embody the trials and tribulations of the past year. The first Zobra was burned in 1924 and it was an instant sensation. The event quickly began to draw large crowds and became a beloved part of the Fiestas de Santa Fe. Over the years, Zobra has undergone many changes and adaptations, but the basic concept has remained the same. The giant marionette represents the gloom and darkness of the past year, and the burning of Zazobra is a way for the people of Santa Fe to let go of their worries and anxieties and to embrace the future with hope and optimism. 
It's like the original Marie Kondo before she had kids, but instead of asking if something sparks joy in you, you just burn it to the ground. Sort of like when you burn all your ex's gifts as a sign to the universe that you're kinda sort of almost over it maybe. That's another topic. Today, the burning of Zobra is one of the most anticipated events in the Fiestas de Santa Fe. The marionette, which stands over 50 feet tall, is set on fire in a dramatic and spectacular display. The burning of Zobra is more than just a fun and festive event. It is a powerful symbol of the resilience and spirit of the people of Santa Fe. It's also a way for the community to come together and celebrate their shared history and traditions and to look forward to a brighter and more hopeful future. Also, you don't mess with Zizobra. In 1964, a group of teenagers tried to steal the Zizobra and hold it ransom, but the community rallied together and found the puppet before any harm was done, which is a reminder that even in the darkest of times, we can come together and overcome adversity. It's also a reminder that teenagers really suck sometimes. Whether you're a long time or new resident of Santa Fe or a first time visitor, the burning of Zazobra is a must see event that will leave you with a deeper appreciation and understanding of this special city and its unique culture and traditions. Burn him, burn him, burn him. You'll get it when you go. Number 15 is the Spanish market. One of the most significant cultural events in Santa Fe is the annual Spanish market, which is held every summer. The Spanish market is a vibrant celebration of the city's rich history, culture, and tradition. Now here are some of the reasons why you should visit the Spanish market in Santa Fe, New Mexico. Well, firstly, the Spanish market is an excellent opportunity to experience the authentic Spanish culture. The market celebrates the traditions and the culture of the Spanish colonial era, which is an essential part of Santa Fe's history. The market features over 250 Spanish artists from New Mexico who showcase their work, including handcrafted furniture, pottery, jewelry, and textiles. The artists use traditional techniques that have been passed down from generation to generation, ensuring that the market remains a true representation of the city's culture and heritage. Now, secondly, the Spanish market is a great place to learn about the history of Santa Fe. The market features educational exhibits and demonstrations that showcase the city's rich history and cultural traditions. Visitors can learn about the Spanish colonial era, the city's architecture, and the unique blend of cultures that make Santa Fe a special place. Now, thirdly, the Spanish market is a fantastic opportunity to support local artists and businesses. The market provides a platform for local artists and businesses to showcase their work and products to a broader audience. By visiting the market and purchasing products, you're supporting the local economy and helping to preserve the city's cultural heritage. Fourthly, the Spanish market is a fun, family-friendly event for those of you with kiddos and grandkiddos. The market features live music, dance performances, and children's activities, making a great event for families. Children can participate in hands-on activities such as pottery making and weaving and learn about the city's culture and traditions. But lastly, the Spanish market is a great opportunity to explore Santa Fe's vibrant art scene. Santa Fe is home to hundreds of art galleries. The market features an array of traditional Spanish art as well as modern art inspired by the city's culture and heritage. Visitors can explore the market and discover new artists and art forms that they may not have seen before. So be sure to check it out. All right, number 16, the Indian market. The Indian market is a cultural celebration of Native American art, crafts, and traditions. It is one of the largest and oldest Native American art markets in the entire Western Hemisphere, and it attracts visitors from all over the world. Now, there are lots of reasons why you should visit. The Indian market features a wide variety of Native American art, ranging from jewelry, pottery, textiles, and paintings. All items sold at the market are handmade by Native American artisans, and this offers visitors a chance to buy authentic traditional arts and crafts. The art sold at the market is a true reflection of the rich history and traditions of Native American tribes. The Indian market offers visitors an opportunity to immerse themselves in the Native American culture. Visitors can learn about the rich history and traditions of the Native American tribes through art and craft demonstrations, performances, and storytelling sessions. The market is a celebration, of the vibrant culture and traditions of Native American tribes, and it provides visitors with a unique cultural experience that cannot be found anywhere else. The Indian market also offers a variety of authentic Native American food. The food is a true reflection of Native American cuisine and is a must try for anyone visiting the market. The food is prepared using traditional methods and ingredients, and it offers visitors a chance to experience the unique flavors of Native American cuisine. The Indian market attracts visitors from all over the world, and it offers a chance for visitors to socialize with other people who share a passion for Native American art and culture. It is said that Santa Fe's population nearly doubles during Indian market. The market's a great place to meet new people, make friends, and create lasting memories. Visitors can interact with Native American artisans and learn about their culture and traditions. Be sure to put it at the top of your to-do list and get there early so that you can find a parking spot. Number 17, the Lensic. 
Now the Lancic Performing Arts Center is a beloved landmark in Santa Fe, New Mexico. First opened in 1931 as a, as a movie palace, the theater has since been restored and transformed into a world-class venue for live performances, concerts, and community events. The Lensic is a hub of cultural activity in Santa Fe, hosting a wide range of performances that reflect the diversity of the region's art and culture. From classic music to modern dance, from theater to spoken word to comedy to concerts, the Lensic offers something for everybody. The Lensic Theater is a bit like a cat. It's been through some pretty tough times, but it's always landing on its feet. Now, built during the Great Depression, this place was like a ray of sunshine in an otherwise gloomy time. It was like the Netflix of the 1930s. The only thing that was missing was the popcorn and the chill, I'd assume. The performers who have graced the Lensic stage are like the who's who of the entertainment world. Duke Ellington, Dave Chappelle, Jack White. But don't worry, the Lensic isn't just about the big names. The theater prides itself on promoting local talent and giving emerging artists a chance to shine. In addition to its role as a venue for live performances, the Lensic serves as a community center, hosting a variety of events and programs that bring people together. This includes film screenings, lectures, and educational programs for children and adults. The Lensic has played a key role in the revitalization of the downtown Santa Fe area. The theater's restoration in the 1990s was part of a larger effort to revive the city's historic downtown district, and the Lensic has since become a focal point of the area's cultural and economic life. In recent years, the Lensic has faced new challenges as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, but who hasn't? Like many performing art venues around the world, the theater has had to adapt to new safety protocols and find new ways to connect with audiences. However, the Lensic rose to the challenge, presenting virtual performances and developing creative solutions to keep the arts in Santa Fe alive. The significance of the Lensic Performing Arts Center cannot be overstated. It is a testament to the rich cultural heritage of Santa Fe and a vital institution that brings people together through the arts, which, if you haven't caught on by now, is a pretty high value for our city. Its history is a reminder of the power of community and the resilience of the human spirit, and its future is bright as it continues to evolve and adapt to the changing needs of the city and all of its people. So add the Lensic to your list. All right, number 18, the Cross of the Martyrs. The Cross of the Martyrs is a monument that stands at the top of a hill in Santa Fe. It's another powerful symbol of the history and culture of the region, and it's a reminder of the sacrifices made by those who fought for their beliefs and their ways of life. The monument was erected in 1920 to commemorate the 250th anniversary of the Pueblo Revolt. This event, which took place in 1680, was a significant moment in the history of New Mexico. The Native American Pueblo people, who had been oppressed by the Spanish colonizers, rose up in revolt and drove the Spanish out of the region for over a decade. Now, during the Pueblo Revolt, it's said that 21 Franciscan friars were killed by the Pueblo people. These friars had come to New Mexico to spread the Catholic faith and convert the Native Americans to Christianity. Their deaths were a tragic loss for the Catholic Church and a powerful symbol of the resistance of the Pueblo people against the Spanish colonizers. The Cross of the Martyrs, which stands on the site where the friars were executed, is a reminder of the bravery and sacrifice of those who fought for their beliefs. It's also a symbol of the history and culture of New Mexico and a testament to the resilience of the Native American people. The monument has become a popular attraction, offering stunning views of the city of Santa Fe and the surrounding landscape. Visitors can climb the hill to the top of the monument and take in the breathtaking scenery while also learning about the history of the monument itself along the way. However, in recent years, the Cross of the Martyrs has become the subject of controversy. Some activists have called for its complete removal, arguing that it glorifies the colonization and oppression of the Native American people. Others argue that it's an important historical landmark and should be preserved as a symbol of the region's history and culture. So yes, Santa Fe, like much of the New World, is steeped in problematic issues tied to colonization. And for those of us with heritage from both sides, we're still processing how to hold all of this history together. Whatever one's opinion on the matter, there's no denying the significance of the Cross of the Martyrs. It is a powerful symbol of the resistance and resilience of the Pueblo people and a reminder of the sacrifices made for those who fought for their beliefs. It is also a testament to the religious and cultural diversity of New Mexico and a popular tourist attraction that draws visitors from all around the world. It represents the struggle for freedom and self-determination. All right, number 19, the Dale Ball Trails. Listen up, fellow hikers. If you're looking for a trail that's more than just a walk in the park, literally, then you need to check out the Dale Ball Trails in Santa Fe, New Mexico. Not only will you get a workout, but you're gonna be treated to some of the most stunning views that you're ever gonna see. The Dale Ball Trails are a network of hiking and biking trails located in the foothills of the Sangre de Cristo Mountains in Santa Fe, New Mexico. These trails are a beloved part of the city's outdoor recreation offerings, and they're a testament to the dedication and hard work of one man who had a vision for preserving the natural beauty of the area. 
Dale Ball was a businessman, an outdoor enthusiast who lived in the Santa Fe in the mid 20th century. He was passionate about hiking and exploring the mountains and the canyons around the city. And he was concerned about the impact of development on these wild and beautiful places. In the 1980s, Ball began working with the city of Santa Fe and other organizations to create a network of hiking and biking trails that would preserve the natural beauty of the area and make it accessible to the public. He spent countless hours scouting out potential routes, negotiating with landowners, and recruiting volunteers to help build and maintain the trails. The first section of the Dale Ball Trails was opened in 1987, and it was an instant success. Over the years, Ball and his team continued to expand the network of trails, adding new routes and improving existing ones. Today, the Dale Ball Trails cover over 22 miles of terrain, and they're a popular destination for hikers, runners, and mountain bikers. The trails offer stunning views of the surrounding mountains and the valleys, and they provide a unique and rewarding way to experience the natural beauty of Santa Fe. The Dale Ball Trails are a testament to the power of one person's vision and his determination. Dale Ball's legacy lives on through these trails, which provide a valuable resource for the people of Santa Fe, and it's a reminder of the importance of preserving the natural world for future generations to enjoy. So what are you waiting for? Grab your hiking boots or your sneakers if you're feeling brave, and head to the Dale Ball Trails in Santa Fe, New Mexico. You won't regret it, I promise. Plus, think of all the cool Instagram photos you're gonna be able to tag, hashtag hiking goals. All right, number 20, the Wine and Chili Fiesta in Santa Fe is a celebration of the region's culinary and viticultural heritage. And it's kind of a big deal. I mean, sure, other places might have their fancy wine festivals or their chili cook-offs, but do they have both at the same time? I don't think so. The Wine and Chili Fiesta is an annual event that began in 1991 has become one of the city's most anticipated events, drawing visitors from all over the world to sample the best food and wine that Santa Fe has to offer. The Wine and Chili Fiesta was a brainchild of several local restaurateurs and wine experts who wanted to showcase the unique flavors and ingredients of the region. They believe that Santa Fe's rich history and diverse culture offered a wealth of culinary possibilities, and they wanted to share that with the world. Over the years, the festival has grown in size and scope, attracting some of the biggest names in the culinary world and cementing Santa Fe's reputation as an exceptional food and wine destination. Today, the festival includes over 90 participating restaurants and over 100 wineries, and it draws thousands of visitors every year. The Wine and Chili Fiesta is more than just a celebration of food and wine. It's a reflection of Santa Fe's unique culture and history. The festival showcases the best that the region has to offer from the local ingredients and wines to the vibrant art and music scene. And whether you're a foodie, a wine lover, or just someone who appreciates the finer things in life, the Wine and Chili Fiesta is a must-see event that will leave you with a deeper appreciation and understanding of this special city and its unique culinary and cultural traditions. See, there is so much more to do than prairie dog watching. And we didn't even mention one of our favorite things to do, playing pool or bowling at the alley while talking business and sipping on a delicious drink paired with exceptional food. So we'll throw that one in as a bonus for you. So thank you all for watching. And again, if you're planning on making a move to Santa Fe or anywhere in New Mexico, please make sure to give us a call, shoot us a text or an email, or just leave us a comment down below. However you want to get a hold of us, we're here to serve you in your move to the Santa Fe area. Let us be your guide.